would speak into our hearts, that, Lord, we would go out of here with a different attitude than we came in, that, Lord, we would stand strong in you, that we would lean on you, that, Lord, we would give our cares over to you, that, Lord, we would just take today and make it a day that you've made and just rejoice and be glad in it. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So I'm going to ask you guys to take a seat this morning. We are going to look at Luke chapter 17. I'm going to talk about attitude, seriously changing your and adjusting your attitude because it seems like the world that we're, what's going on in the world today, I don't know if you paid any attention to stuff that's going on around the world, but one of the things is that in California this past week, um, they decided by 2035 they're only going to natural you know, cars that are powered by electricity. But then three days later, they had to tell people not to charge their electric cars because uh, the power grid and the need for air conditioning because of a heat wave meant that they couldn't do that and they didn't want people doing that. In Colorado, um, earlier this week, they had a heat wave and the company can control your thermostat. Um, they wouldn't let you turn it down below 78. Okay, so if you didn't see that, it's one. But over in Europe, they're expecting rolling blackouts as well, but also there's a big concern about heat for the winter. So we're in a world right now where things are changing, are they not? I mean, we've had abundance. We have plenty. And I think the thing that God wants us to do is get our attitude. I mean, it's interesting. I was reading online that, um, that these organizations want to watch churches today to see what they're going to say about the president's speech this week. Okay? Well, you don't have to worry about me. I'm not going to say anything about it this morning. If you watch it, you, all you got to do is shake your head. So... Um, so that said, all that stuff that you, you, it's taken place, we live in a world that's not friendly to Christians right now, right? And so if, if that's the case, we better have our attitude right. We better have it focused on God and seriously in the right space and place. And when I was riding yesterday, it, it was interesting. I left, when I left the island, there was a lot of people here, a lot of cars on the island, a lot of traffic. I left, and there wasn't a lot of cars every place else. And... Um, I just was riding, and I'm thanking God. It was a beautiful day, and, and I kept thinking, you know, I've got this time just to speak to God and talk to God, and God can speak to my heart. And I thought, how many people are taking that time to do that? You think about that? How, how much time do you actually take to just spend with God? And, and uh, it was one of the things as I was doing, I kept thinking, but I'm going to start this morning with, with a Carl joke. So if you haven't you know, if Carl's not here this morning, so Carl and a lawyer, and a lawyer were on a plane a couple years ago from Florida back to New Jersey, and the lawyer asked Carl if he would like to play a fun game, and Carl, who was really tired, just wanted to take a nap, and he politely declined. He rolls over alongside the window and tries to catch a few winks, but the lawyer won't let up. He persists, and he says, Carl, he says to Carl, come on, this game is easy, and it's a lot of fun. He says, here's a game. He says, I ask you a question. If you don't know the answer, you pay me five hours and vice versa. Again, Carl declines and tries to get some sleep. The lawyer, now agitated, says, okay, if you don't know the answer, you pay me five hours. If I don't know the answer, I pay you $500. Well, Carl, being as cheap as he is, okay, right away, his eyes open up and he perks up and he says, okay, okay. So um, the lawyer says, okay, I get the first question. He asked Carl, what's the distance from the earth to the moon? Carl doesn't even answer, reaches into his pocket, takes out five hours, hands it to the lawyer. Okay, at this point, Carl says to the lawyer, Carl's turn to ask the question. He says, um, what goes up a hill with three legs and comes down with four legs? The lawyer is puzzled. He's searching on his laptop, he's looking through all his references. He calls people on his phone. He can't seem to find anything anything. He, he checks the Library of Congress. He's frustrated. He even sends emails to some of his friends and co-workers. After an hour, he wakes Carl up, who had fallen asleep against the window, and, he's, and he hands Carl $500. Carl says, thank you. Goes back to sleep against the window. The lawyer looks at Carl like, wait a minute. He wakes up. He says, so what's the answer? Without a word, Carl reaches into his pocket and gives the lawyer five more dollars. For those of you who thought Carl was dumb, wrong. Okay, so that's it. Um, so, if you didn't get the joke, you'll get it later. Okay, so, um, so I do. I want to talk about attitude. I want to talk about different things. This this group of texts that we're going to look at this morning is going to talk about a couple different things. It's going to talk about sin. It's going to talk about faith, forgiveness, forgiveness, faith, service, but then also gratitude. And as a Christian, we need to realize something. We got to come to grips with our, our sins. Okay, but also forgiveness. We're supposed to forgive people, right? Yes. And the biggest thing that happens is we don't like to forgive. We like to remember stuff. 
Okay, now my wife's not here this morning. She's working, and, and so I, I can't ask her. But um, most likely, I've probably not done very much wrong in our relationship over the years, okay? And if she was here, I know she'd agree with me, okay? Um, but there's been a couple things over the years. So I know there's been a couple. But, and, and she's had to forgive me, and, and not like Tony and Georgie, 48 years. I can tell, by the way, Tony went, yeah, okay, um, that there's been lots of forgiveness there, right, Tony? Yes, okay. So, but that said, let's look what Jesus says here. Jesus first is going to start with, he starts with children. He says, look, stumbling blocks are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. Don't be the person that causes problems for other people. You got that? You hear, wait, listen to me this morning. I better hear it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, or amen. Don't be the pro- person that causes problems for other people. You got that? Amen. And see, realize something. We have a way of making sure that we don't get our way. You know what we do? We annoy the other people. Liz laughs, right? Liz, Liz, you don't do that, do you? See, there you go. They've been doing it all weekend. We've been annoying one another. So, um, what's interesting is, is um, Chris and I were talking about, you know, being home and being around one another. And she goes to work a fair amount. But last week she took all week off, and I had to tell her that when she came around for her to go back to work, and I was happy and <laughs> praising the Lord because I was like, you know what? Not that I don't like having her around, but there's I like having some me time. Right? I, let's be honest. I, I like having some me time. I was like, that's not a bad thing. I love her to death. But you're sometimes, you know what? Me time. Yeah, there, there we go. Listen, I got Liz. Liz is going to have a new keyword with Mark. Uh, it's me time. Okay, so here we go. But as you, as you take a look at what he's talking about here, don't be that person. He says it would be better for him to have a millstone, millstone tied around his neck and be thrown in the sea for than him to cause a little one to sin. He's even talking about kids. Don't mess even with the kids. In our culture today, they're messing with the kids. Our culture, look, they are doing things and they're saying things. I don't understand when drag became such a big thing that little kids got to be introduced to it. Okay. I don't, I don't get all this. I don't, somebody explain to me why, why it's time to, to have these kids all be confused about sexuality. Right? It is evil. It's absolutely wrong and evil. Kids should enjoy growing up. Nobody messed your growing up, did they? I told you before. I was a kid. I loved trucks. I loved G.I. Joe. I loved all that stuff. You know, I had fun with that stuff. I used to, evil Knievel, my, you know, as a kid, my biggest thing was evil Knievel, okay? <laughs> Sorry, but I grew up at the right time for evil Knievel, okay? So what happened was evil Knievel would jump stuff, right? Yeah. Guess what Todd did? <laughs> I jumped stuff and, and got hurt sometimes. Never forget, my mom one time caught me as I was, they used to have these little plastic football helmets that didn't have anything inside, and my mom said, from now on, when you go to do something like this, wear a helmet. <laughs> we had this plastic helmet with nothing inside. I put it on. I'm racing down this hill full speed. My mom comes pulling up just as I hit the ramp, and I hear, Todd, no! Okay, and I had lined up about 10 trash cans. <laughs> Did not make it. And crashed, and the helmet really didn't work very functionally. Okay, but what happened was I enjoyed it. Because Evil Knievel was somebody that I watched, right? Now, I didn't try to jump in the Snake River Canyon. He failed at that. But, but you tried stuff, right? You, you, as kids, kids see things, and they will take it, and they'll try to figure out what's going on. As a kid, let them grow up. Let, let young boys be boys and girls be girls. And if a young boy tries on a dress, it doesn't mean they're a girl. Okay? Sorry, but stuff happens. You know how I know? I had eight brothers. If somebody tries to explain to me what normal is, do any of you know what normal is? Anybody here? Because in my house, it's not even normal, and it's just me, Kristen, and the, the dogs, right? My dogs aren't even normal, right? See, realize that don't be the one that causes problems, and, and why aren't we the same for the kids? You know what? Let the kids learn about God and love God and love life. Life should be fun. It looks like what we're doing to life is making it miserable. Are we not? The thing I loved about summer this summer was this, was that 
He knew something was coming, and he looked forward to the beach. He looked forward to all the things that going to happen. Now winter's coming, right? How many of you up this morning and said, man, I can't wait for winter to be here, right? We're like, maybe I can hold on to a couple more weeks of winter, summer, right? Isn't that what we do? Some over here raised their hand. They were lying. We know that, okay? We're, we're, we're not going to. We're not for winter. Why? Are you for winter? I don't like uh, heat. Heat? So, heat? But we're not talking about heat. We're talking about snow and cold, right? So all that stuff. So I'm off on a tangent here. Let's get back to the scripture, okay? He says, verse 3, watch yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, do what? Forgive. So realize something. When somebody does something against you, okay, and you see it, you can say, hey, look, you know what? That isn't right. If the person repents, what do you do? Forgive. Can't hear you. What? Forgive. What does that mean? Remember it in the data bank so that a little bit later that you can take it out on a person or forgive? forgive? Okay, see, I've been married a long time. I've tried to forgive and forget, right? So now, verse 4. Even if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times returns to you saying, I repent, you must what? Forgive. You must what? Forgive. Say it with a little passion. I must do what? So if you are going to be like Jesus, what Jesus wants us to do is what are we supposed to do? Forgive. See, realize something. It doesn't mean getting your way and twisting the person until you get what you want. What it means is you forgive. You move forward. You say, you know what? I am forgiving. I'm moving forward. You got that? Even if they go against you seven times in a day. That's a lot, is it not? Ever have somebody seven times in a day do something against you? Not really. Does that happen? It's almost impossible for seven times in a day. But what are you supposed to do if they come and say, forgive me? You forgive, right? See, look them in the eyes and say, I forgive. I forgive you. Oh, look at Georgie. Georgie. Hold on to that baby. Georgie's like, if they don't come to you, baby, you hold on to that thing, right? Listen. You rip their eyeballs out. You just say, you make them hurt. Okay. But what he's saying here is if they, say, if they come to you, right, if he returns to you saying, forgive me, right? Right? So, George, so Georgie's got an out now. Like, Tony, if you don't come and say, forgive me, Tony, every time she does, every time you do something, just say, forgive me, right? So, and realize something. What he's saying here is look at the situation. Are you a person of forgiveness or a person of attitude where you want to say, you know what, I'm going to hold this against people? It's not good to hold things in, is it? Realize something, a lot of us are not healthy because we hold stuff in instead of forgiving. What we want to do is hold it on and say, oh, I can't wait to use that against the other person. Does that work? No, I've been married a long time. I can tell you that does not work. I, I told you, I'll tell you the story again. When we first got married, I thought I was going to teach my wife a lesson, okay, that when she didn't do what I wanted, I wouldn't talk to her. Okay, sounds reasonable, right? Okay, so I decided I wasn't going to talk to her until she asked what was wrong. But I went three, four weeks, and I said, do you know why I'm not talking to you? And she goes, what do you mean? <laughs> At that point, I went, you moron. Do you realize she had no idea you were upset? You are wasting your time. From that point forward, I never did that again. I said, you know what? You know who the idiot here was? It was me. I thought I was going to prove a point, okay, by keeping quiet and not talking to her. And she had no idea I wasn't even talking to her. <laughs> right? <laughs> I gave her me time. <laughs> Look at Liz. Liz. Liz is having a great time this morning. Mark, I got all kinds of new things in our toolbox. We're going to have me time, right? See, what happens here is, is you think about this. You think you're proving something. The best thing to do is say, you know what? I have an issue. You did this. Let's deal with it. And if the person says, forgive me, you do what? You forgive them. So I don't hold on to it anymore. I go, you know what? This really annoyed me. Okay? And she'll go, oh, well, I'm sorry. Okay. That's simple, right? Yeah, but, 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 but let me say a little bit more. Right? See, he says, look, you must forgive. Now, what happens here is his apostles hear this. Look at what verse 5 says. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. It didn't say give us faith. He said make our faith deeper, richer, more. Give us more faith because this isn't easy. See, the world that we live in today, you better ask God for more faith. You hear me? You've got challenges coming. I'm telling you, guys, you better listen. We're headed towards challenges. 
I mean, if you look at what's going on in our world today, the things that are taking place, the plans that are going forward, we're in trouble here. Okay? The things that we've grown up accustomed to aren't always going to be that way. You better say, God, increase my faith. I need to depend on you because if I depend on my own understanding, I'm in trouble. So the Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say this black mulberry tree. And the reason he picks the black mulberry tree is its roots get spread out and deep and they go all over the place. It's almost impossible to uproot a mulberry tree. Okay, so he says, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say that this mulberry tree be pulled up by its roots and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. See, nothing is impossible with our God if you have faith. You got that? If you've got an attitude of faith, you don't go up, get up in the morning and say, oh, this is going to be awful. What you do is say, God, where are you taking me today? God, how you lead me today? Today, God, is the day that you've made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. God, I can't wait to see what you do today, right? But realize, that's not the country we live in right now. Everybody's miserable. Everybody's miserable. Okay? People are, are grumpy and miserable. Two sides, the two politi- polis, you know, all the politicians, the two sides of them, they can't get along. You got people upset, mad, angry about all kinds of things. Realize something, that should not be Christians. Christians should be saying, you know what? God's got us covered. God's got us covered. Verse 6. I mean, sorry, verse 7. Would any of you say to your slave who comes now, this is an interesting thing that Jesus pops in here because now he's going to get your attitude about serving, okay? He says, look, would any of you say to your slave who comes in from the field after plowing or shepherding sheep, come at once and sit down for a meal? See, remember, who's the boss? Okay, the slave owner is. And who's working for him? You are. What's your attitude? Jesus says, what's your attitude? Would you come in and, and say, you know what? Sit down and make me a meal? Uh Uh-uh. He says, what are you going to do? You're going to serve. He goes on the next part of the verse. He says, won't the master instead say to him, get my dinner ready and make yourself ready to serve me while I eat and drink? Then you can eat and drink. The attitude is what? You serve others who? First. Hear me. You serve others what? You serve others when? Yeah, but that's not how we like it. We like to be the one who's sitting in the big chair, right? Serve me. I know when I was a kid. You know, what amazed me was I had little brothers, so I considered them all my servants, okay? And when one would say no, then you call for the other one, okay? First would be, Kevin, Kevin, ah, he wouldn't do anything, okay? Then I'd say, Stephen, you know, and finally, you know, keep going and get one, okay? And one would come out, okay, you got to go get me this. And they would do it for a while, and then, nah, I don't want to do this anymore, Right? But see, we all like that. Nobody says, I want to be the one to go get it for you, right? Oh, hold on, I'll be the one. See, he's saying, how do you perceive things? Are you the one who's looking to serve? Or are you the one saying, serve me? But see, if you're serving Jesus, guess what? You should be prepared to serve. You're not the one getting served. You should be prepared to serve. That doesn't always, it's not always easy, is it? So far, look at the attitude here. You know what? It's not about us, is it? We're supposed to forgive. And then realize, stop getting in the way of other people. Then he goes on here. He says, look, verse 9. He won't thank the slave because he did what he's told, was he? Would he? Well, Jesus, are you going to thank? If the person is serving you and that's what you, you, the job that you hired him for, are you going to say, you know, thank you? No. You're going to say, this is what you're supposed to do, right? And you would expect him to do it right, right? Because not the, you got to do that, right? You know, when your husband or wife is upstairs and you say, honey, and they go, what? Honey, what? And you know they're asking you a question to do something, right? Oh, Liz has got that smile on her face, right? No, so here we go. You ask that question and you pretend like you can't hear right. What? Do you know, all right, do you know where this is? What? You know what I'm talking about, right? See? Realize our attitude plays a part in this, doesn't it? See, what he's saying here is when we serve other people, don't get an attitude. Do it out of love and respect for God, not for the other people. 
Let's go on verse 10. So you too, when you've done everything you were commanded to do, should say, we are slaves, undeserving of special praise. We've only done what our duty is. See, get in your mindset that you're serving God and that you're not looking for special praise. But everybody wants to be praised, right? Everybody wants to be told, good job. Is that something to expect? Not always, is it? You don't always get, you know, praise. It's, it's, it's interesting that, you know, I, I can remember the first couple of years I was here, every year on the 1st of August, the church would do something to say, hey, we're glad to have you here another year. I guess by year eight, they were sick of me, okay? And we didn't do it anymore, okay? And I remember this year, I, like this year has been so long, I, I thought it was funny that I remembered and nobody else remembered, okay? So I was like, yeah, you know, I've been here now for a long time, you know, I've been here you know, 17, 18 years. And thought, but it's, it's interesting because time goes by and I'm not picking on the church. I love being here. But what happens is we think we're supposed to get special recognition, right? When I first came here, they did an article in the newspaper, all kinds of stuff. Now they're like, who? Right? Patty's been here so long, we can't remember when she started. So here we go. I mean, you, you think about it, right? When you look at this, stop looking for special praise. You do it because you serve who? God. Okay? Now, it's interesting because there's a shift here. After all this happens, Jesus says this. This is one of the neatest stories in the whole Bible because I love talking about this around Thanksgiving. What is your attitude of Thanksgiving? See, if you're going to serve God and you're not going to be a stumbling block, if you're going to forgive people, okay, and you're going to look at things and say, you know what, God, I'm doing what you called me to do. I'm not going to worry about the praise. I'm not going to worry about the pats on the back. But the thing is, what is your attitude in real life? And that's what happens here in verse 11. It says, now on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Gal Galilee. As he was entering a village, 10 men with leprosy met him. They stood at a distance. See, they weren't allowed in town. They weren't allowed to be around people. They had leprosy. And unless they were told they were clean by the priest, they basically had to stay outside town. They couldn't have interaction with people, okay? They couldn't do anything but be out there with other lepers. You got that? So they were outcast. These were the outcasts. Look at their attitude. They raised their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us, or Jesus, heal us. Okay? They're yelling it from a distance because they weren't even allowed to come close to Jesus. That was the way the rules were in, in Israel. That's the way the, the biblical conduct was supposed to be, that you don't get close to someone. And they go, Jesus, have mercy on us. You got that? Now, here's Jesus. Jesus, and I like this, and he goes, when he saw them, he said, go and show yourselves to the priests, and they went along and they were cleansed. You got what happened here? Jesus told them to go. You hear what happened? See, they asked for help, right? Did they get it? Okay, and what's Jesus say? Don't come to me. What's he say? He says, go, right, and show yourself to the priest. It's an interesting thing because I, I looked at this in, Le in Leviticus 14, what they were supposed to do to go to the priest, and the priest would do a cleansing offering. They'd take two birds, and one day would break over a pot of water, and the blood would get into the water, and it was called living water. Okay? Jesus said, I am living water, right? And they would sprinkle it on the formerly unclean person, and they would be clean. Okay, but I just want you to get this picture here. They're supposed to go to the priest, and the priest was supposed to cleanse them with living water so they would be clean. But guess who they had an encounter with? The living water, did they not? They had this encounter with the living water, and what happens is they were cleansed. They just, all they did, he said, go. Oh, I just want to make sure you get this. Do you listen to God when God says go? Because when he said go, what did they do? How long did they wait? See, the best part about this was, when were they healed? As they started to go, right? See, then they said, well, wait a minute, we asked you to heal us. Go and show yourself to the priest. Go. As simple as go. You know what we do? We want to fight with God. We want to have arguments with God. We want to pray for God. God, you're not doing what I'm asking. But what happens is, when God tells us to do something, do it. Got it? When God wants us to do it, just do it. Look. I understand we can be married to people sometimes that can cause us problems. We can have kids that are, are issues. We can have people in our lives that are pain in the rear end. But realize something. It doesn't give us the right to say, you know what, I'm going to do what I want to do. God calls us to be the kind of people that are supposed to listen and do what he says. And when he says go, we go. 
And so you've got that picture here, and as you look at this, it's an amazing thing because what happens is they go, and you would figure here as they're going, right? I mean, everything's good. It says, then one of them, when he saw he was healed, you got this? One. You got, there was how many? Ten. One. Okay. Are you that one person? As you sit here this morning, are you the one person who is truly thankful and takes the time to tell God that he's thankful? Or you just take it for granted? We live in a country that we are so blessed. If you've ever been to Africa, let me tell you something. You don't know what poverty and poor looks like. When I was in Malawi, man, it was unreal some of the poverty that we saw. The little kids that had flies that were sticking to them and everything. Like some of the stuff I saw that just broke my heart. And all you want to do is hold those kids and love them and say, you know what? There's something better for you. But realize they live in a country that's horrible. Talk about rolling power outages. They don't really have power in most villages. The one place that we had a church meeting, it had one wire with two lights on it that had one plug that was wired by an electrician that really didn't know what he was doing, okay? And that was their power. And they would have rolling power outages that would last anywhere between 12 to 16 hours for one light, okay? And I get complaints. Can you turn the AC down? Can you turn it up? Okay, last week, it's 70 degrees. It's too cold in here. So I wore flip-flops this week just to see if my feet would get cold. Okay? Wore flip-flops for that reason. I want to see, you know what? This is the last, last Sunday of summer. Let's see what happens. See, as you sit here, what, is, what are you focused on? Are you focused on what God's doing or everything you can complain about? You're going to walk out of here this morning, and your attitude better be different than you came in. You better walk out of here and say, God, you know what? I need to work on my attitude because so often I'm ready to complain about everything in my life instead of giving you praise. This one, he says, look, when he saw he was healed, he turned back praising God with a loud voice. He didn't go, praise God. He went, praise God, I'm healed. That's what he did. You know, I hear people watching football. I'll ride by their house. And I'll hear them, yeah! Okay, not too many Giants fans. They didn't really have a great season last year, so they didn't say yes, cheer, right? But, but what happens is you hear people screaming and yelling and cheering and bouncing up and down, okay? But how many times do you see people, wow, God must have did something good in their life because they're praising God, right? We were out eating a couple weeks ago in this restaurant, and I got a text, and out loud I said, praise the Lord, that's awesome. And everybody in this place shut up. <laughs> and they looked at me and Krista. And she goes, what was that? I said, well, now that everyone's, I remember the E.F. Hutton commercials? When E.F. E. F. Hutton talks, everybody listens. Remember that? Okay. That's what I felt like because as soon as I said, praise the Lord, everybody went, and I said, well, I guess I better share this one out loud. So I read the text off out loud. And people were like, okay. <laughs> and they didn't know what to do at that point. And I said, isn't that a great praise? And Krista said, yeah, that was it. That's how we left it. Okay. And then people started to talk again. Realize something. You can praise God. There's nothing wrong with it, right? But you know what? You'll watch a football game and go, yeah. You'll watch a speech and go, oh. And you can do all kinds of things. But realize something. You've got God, and you've been blessed to praise him. How many times have you been blessed this week? Have you praised him? Have you taken the time to say, God, thank you. You've been so good to me. You know, when I, I got to the top of that bridge and I saw the Amar I, I really thought World War III was happening. The Amada, sh Amada ships coming this way and the Amada this way. And I'm on the Man Locum Bridge and I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, they're all coming and they're coming right at me. And I'm watching this. I'm going, man, God, isn't this beautiful? I've got this great breeze. I'm sitting here watching the boats. And I'm sitting here and there's nobody else on the bridge with me. And it's just me. Praise the Lord, right? God, it's me and you. You got moments like that. You can say, God, thank you so much. You know what? It doesn't matter how much money you have or the things you own. You can enjoy and rejoice in those things. You can thank you, God. Look at what he does next. He fell with his face to the ground at Jesus' feet, and he did what? 
Now, Jesus kind of adds insult to injury here because they make sure the footnote says he was Samaritan, okay? A Samaritan means he was really an outcast because the Jews didn't like them because they didn't practice all of Judaism and the things that Judaism Judaism said, and they were different. They were outside the realm of being a true Jew. So it was a Samaritan, really a person that wasn't really considered much. You got that? This is a guy who fell at Jesus' feet. So anybody can be thankful to God, right? You got that? Anybody can be thankful to God. How many of us take the time to do that? Oh, we're Bible-trained Christians. We know how to thank God. No, just thank God. As simple as God, thank you, God, for that. Man, the sunset last night, it was beautiful last night. I got pictures. I came back over the bridge the other way when I was coming home. Stopped and took pictures of it. Incredible the way the clouds have framed everything and just the way the sky was lit up in various colors. How many people took the time to thank God for his creation? Right? I know there was one. See, what are you giving God thanks for? How about the people that you're here with this morning? How about when you go out of here? And the people you're going home to are going to be around. Have you given God thanks for them? I'm telling you, having a mom the way that my mom was, I thank God for every single day that I had her while she was alive. Because she always would tell me, whenever I got hurt, and boy, I got hurt an awful lot, she would say, God's making you better than before. God's making you better than before? I see somebody's horns out there beeping. I hope it's not our cars. So we're almost done here. So look. Verse 17, then Jesus said, were there not 10 cleansed, right? Wait, weren't there 10? Yep. Are you more like the one or like the 90%? See, are you the 10% or the 90%? See, because you're going to go out of here, and the true measure of whether your attitude's changed is what you say when you get out of here. Because you can come to church, and you can speak all nice and wonderful and everything. But guess what? You're going to go out of here, there's going to be traffic, there's going to be people on bikes. Restaurants are going to have a lot of people in it, okay? The weather, all that stuff. You know, I'm watching the cars right now. People pulling, turning, crossing. It's really cool watching this, right? We're in church. You're blessed right now, right? You're blessed. And think about this. Are you going to let traffic make you miserable? Because I know when Dave came in this morning, you know what he said to me? He goes, I've, all summer I've come across and I finally caught the bridge. And then Tony told me the same thing. She caught the bridge, Okay? For those of you who live on the island or are visiting and you're still on the island today, give God praise. You don't have to cross the bridge, right? Somebody say praise the Lord, right? Praise the Lord. You don't have to cross the bridge. You can find things to praise God about, right? Later, some of you are going to be on the beach, right? Right? Praise God. There isn't a west wind today, right? Somebody, yeah, praise God because what does that mean? The cute little things that got wings come in, and they like to do what? Bite. Right? Praise God. They're over there. Right? You can give God for all kinds of praise. He says, look, was no one found to turn back and give praise to God except this foreigner? Which one are you? Are you the one that gives praise? Are you too busy being miserable? See, to seriously adjust your attitude, you got to be a person who forgives. you got to be a person who doesn't get in the way of other people. Allow God to work it through you, but don't cause yourself to be a stumbling block to other people. And then the last, look, as you look at this, be the kind of person that you are thankful for what God has done. You got that? Be thankful. Are you thankful for what God has done in your life? You're going to walk out of here this morning. The whole, the whole essence of this whole sermon is this. You're going to walk out of here. What are you going to do with this? You got this? What are you going to do with it? Because somebody's going to make you miserable. Somebody's going to try. Guarantee. Okay? Somebody's going to make you miserable. Some people won't even be able to get out of here. They'll say, you know, it was really cold in there. Okay? Or someone will say, you know, it was really warm in there. So all you're thinking about the whole time you're sitting here is, I'm cold. I'm warm. Can't stand it. Right? Didn't hear anything the pastor said. Went womp. Right? So what do you think the pastor's thinking when you come out to complain about the temperature every time Carl does that, okay? okay? What do you think I'm thinking? Did you hear anything? You're walking out of here. Are you going to praise? Praise God. Give God the praise. And he says, then he said to the man, get up and go your way. Your faith has made you well. You see what his praise did? It not only made him physically well on the outside, it made him spiritually well on the inside. 
See, we might look good on the outside, but we're a mess on the inside. You know when we start to change on the inside? When we give God thanks. See, we have a whole day devoted to it. Thanksgiving, right? Is that what you do all day? No, you're stuffing your face. Mm, yummy, yummy, right? Right? You're going to walk out of here this morning. What are you going to do with this? Are you going to hug somebody and say, you know what, God? Thank you for this person. God, thank you for this event today. God, thank you. Look, even when I've gotten hit, I thank God for that day. Thank God. You know what, God? Today is the day that you've made. I'm going to be thankful and rejoice in it. Hey, it wasn't fun, was it? See, even when things go wrong, give God what? Thanks. Because in God's working, it's working for your benefit to do something incredible in your life. Right? Just, just like your flat tire, right? Flat tire. You're supposed to be here, right? See, as you see that, you don't. Ha- you, all you have to do is get your attitude on right, and what will happen is things will change in your life. You got that? That's what God wants to do. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, what a great and awesome God you are. We thank you for the power of your word and who you are. And what the scriptures say about us and our attitude, Lord, let us be people who truly will love and, and Lord, Lord, just be people who are thankful and grateful, people who forgive, people who don't get in the way of other people and, and that were a stumbly block for them, Lord. But we just pray that, Lord, we would do these things and have that attitude that would be different from the world. Lord, let us be those people that when people encounter us, they'll ask us why. So we ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for the blessings we have. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that we've been given. Lord, we pray for any person here that doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that they would ask Jesus to come into their heart, to know that Jesus is the forgiver of sins. He can deliver us from that sinful nature, the whole thing that we have. And Lord, that we can have a relationship with the living God, the creator of the universe. And so Lord, I ask for anyone who has made that decision, that you would allow them to do that this morning. And then Lord, I pray for us as we go out of here, that we would be people with a thank you in our heart, Lord, that we would be people of forgiveness, that we would be people of love, and that, Lord, we would be the type of people that would not be a stumbly block, but a person who builds up other people, that would be the type of people that would just encourage and support and love others, and we ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Guys, have a great morning. God bless you.